Father, thank you for a message to share with my brothers and sisters in Christ and with my potential brothers and sisters in Christ. If there be any good in this message, Father, I give you thanks and your Holy Spirit thanks for preparing it. It is in Jesus' name that I give the thanksgiving. Amen. A man is walking alone in the desert. He is trying to go from point A to point B. He is on the right path until a sandstorm causes him to lose his way. He has no compass. He is not sure if he should turn to the left or to the right, or should he continue going forward. But if he has become turned around, perhaps his destination is actually behind him. In front and to either side of him, he sees shadows. But are they actually real? Is there really something there, or is it merely his imagination? He finds himself going in circles. What should he do? What is the answer for him? What is the answer for anyone who finds herself or himself going in circles? I would suggest to you that this man in the desert needs to find an oasis. An oasis. The dictionary would define an oasis as a place of greenery, water, and food, in a desert and or barren land, a place where shelter and safety are present, a place of refuge. I would add to that a place where your needs can and will be met. God provides all of the things that we need in a fallen world today. In John chapter 6, verse 35, and Jesus himself is speaking here. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. And whoever believes in me will never thirst. Psalm 91 tells us, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my fortress and my refuge, my God in whom I trust. And then starting in verse 9, if you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come to your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Now, as you think on these holy scriptures from the Bible, the devil may come to tempt you. The devil may remind you that someday you will die. The devil may then ask you, how has God protected you? Why would he let you die? And you might then answer the devil that the book of Hebrews tells us in chapter 9 and verse 27, it is appointed unto men once to die. The Holy Scriptures do not tell us that God will prevent us from dying a physical death. Unless Jesus Christ comes for his own first, those who know Christ as their personal Savior will indeed die but only a physical death. God's care and provision for us does not stop at the time of our physical death. Once we die physically, the Hebrew scriptures gives us these words, and after that, to face judgment. 
God has promised his own something after physical death. And that something is to enter the oasis of heaven, a place where all of our needs will be met, a place where there will no longer be tears of sorrow or even death. Once you enter into God's oasis, you can never experience death again. Revelation 21 verse 4 tells us, And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain. Think about a place where pain, in all of its many forms, does not exist. Then think about an eternity without any pain. Possibly when we are given heavenly bodies, God in his infinite wisdom will not include the, in our heavenly bodies the capacity to feel any pain whatsoever. Possibly in our heavenly bodies, God will not include the capacity for sorrow or the ability to cry. God's oasis for us then will be a very, very good place to be indeed. For those who know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, we do not need to be disoriented by physical death. Our physical death will merely be a doorway opening up to God's oasis in heaven. Like coming into a warm sanctuary from the outside where the temperature was around 10 degrees below zero. And knowing that when you enter heaven, a spacious room, or in the New King James Version, the word is mansion, has already been prepared for you. It's been prepared for you by Jesus Christ himself. Jesus has used the best building materials to construct your dwelling place. After all, you will live in heaven for a very long time. Jesus wants heaven to be your oasis for the rest of eternity. In the book of 2 Peter, it says in verse 9 of chapter 2, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. This is what God wants for us today. This is what is available for us to choose today. But let us look at Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27 again, because there is something else in this verse that we want to be aware of, something that we do not want in our oasis. The verse says, it is appointed unto men to die once. Why would the Holy Scripture say the word once? Can we really die a second time? Is there any substance to the saying, born once, die twice, born twice, die once? And the answer to both of these questions is yes. Reading from the book of Revelation chapter 20 and verses 14 and 15, then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found written into the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. In John chapter 3, Jesus tells us in verse 3, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then in verse 6, Jesus tells us, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water 
and the Spirit. If we have never been born of the Spirit, when we die physically, we lose the option of spiritual birth. We die in our sins. And so, because our name is not written into the book of life, we ultimately die a second death. We die a second death because we allowed ourselves to remain on the path toward the second death. But if we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior and our Lord, we have spiritual birth. We have therefore been born twice. Our name is indeed written into the book of life, and we escape the second death. We die only once. Because of these truths, when we stand before Jesus Christ on the day of judgment, our entrance into heaven is either an assurity or it is an impossibility. God is in control, and he has mandated that one thing must take place for us to enjoy God's refuge in heaven. We cannot enjoy the benefits of heaven unless we are allowed to enter in. And this is what God wants for us. God wants for us all to escape the second death and live for all eternity in the oasis of heaven. If you think about it analytically, because there is a second death, not everyone will go to live in heaven. This is a horrible thing to realize, that some indeed will go to that other place. Some people that I know and some people that you know are going to end up in that other place. The concept of hell is a joke to many people today, but that is only because they cannot see the doorway to hell today. They cannot appreciate today the fire and the stench of hell. But on judgment day, hell will be no laughing matter whatsoever. On judgment day, the entrance to hell will be to the left of Jesus Christ. And if you cannot get to the entrance to hell by yourself, no problem. There will be attendants who will actually escort and throw you into hell. That is, if Jesus does not direct you to go to his right and into heaven. So today, God allows us to make that choice, the horrors of hell or the oasis of heaven. We make the decision for ourselves God wanted Eve and Adam to eat from the tree of life. He gave to them his permission to do so, but they chose to eat from the wrong tree. Similarly for us, we can continue to wander in the wilderness of life to enjoy the sins of life and to exclude God from our lives, from our own personal world. We can be blown by this wind of change or that wind of change, do whatever we want, even get lost in a sandstorm. Some say it doesn't make any difference. We are all going to die anyway. But somehow, in the very fiber of who I am, I feel as if this often mentioned someday is not that far from now. I can see some of the handwriting on the wall as if God were telling me something. His oasis is much closer for me now than it was some 20 to 30 years ago. Something is going on in the world today. And then I remember God is also here in my life right now. There is an aspect of God's oasis with me right now. The psalmist is correct. 
I don't have to wait until someday to feel the presence of God in my life even today. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress and my God in whom I trust. I will remember that circumstances and disorientation in my life will ultimately not mean anything. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20 tell us we belong to God. We have been bought at a price. And that price is the blood of Jesus Christ shed on the cross for our sins. What God has done will not waver. Whatever God has promised to do will not change. God is the oasis that I need in my life for today and for tomorrow. And at his timing, God's heaven is the oasis that I will need in my life for the rest of eternity. Where could I go but to the Lord when only Jesus has the words of eternal life? God remains in control. Physical death merely opens a door. Over the last 125 years or so, many songs have been recorded. Listen to these words, which were recorded over 75 years ago. Words about a man and his horse. The horse's name is Dan. All day I faced a barren waste without the taste of water, cool water. Old Dan and I with throats burned dry and souls that cry for water, cool, clear water. Keep a moving, Dan. Don't you listen to him, Dan. He's a devil, not a man. He spreads the burning sand with water. Dan, can you see that big green tree where the water's running free and it's waiting there for you and me? The shadows sway and seem to say, tonight we'll pray for water, cool water. And way up there, he will hear our prayer. And then he'll say, there's water, cool, clear water. Sarah Young in her book entitled Jesus Calling tells us, I want you to know how safe and secure you are in my presence. That is a fact, totally independent of your feelings. You are on your way to heaven. Nothing, nothing can prevent you from reaching that destination. There you will see me face to face, and your joy will be off the charts by any earthly standards. Even now you are never separated from me, though you must see me through eyes of faith. I will walk with you till the end of time and onward into eternity. Isaiah tells us in chapter 3 and verse 4, and here he is speaking of the Lord. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, on you and only you, because he trusts in you. This is what God's oasis holds for us. Where would I want to go but to the Lord? 
In Jesus' name, amen. Before we sing our final song today, I 